please rise to welcome our graduates. rise for the South African National Anthem. Oh, oh, oh. 
Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to the official, official commencement ceremony for the AISCT class of 2023. I am Dr. Daniel Joubert, head of school, and I'd like to start by welcoming our parents, guests, colleagues, and members of our AISCT school council. I also wish to welcome our global AISCT community, joining via live stream from around the world. And a very special welcome to our 37 seniors the 17th graduating class at AISCT. Thank you to our staff choir for the beautiful rendition of the South African National Anthem, as well as previously leading the senior parade earlier this morning. It is wonderful to involve our greater community in our graduation ceremony, and I greatly appreciate you sharing your talents with all of us. Seniors, the past four years, you have had the COVID sandwich with the pandemic firmly in between your ninth and 12th grade years. You have become masters at readjusting expectations and priorities. And yet, you now find yourselves firmly past the uncertainties of a previous time and ready to take on what lies ahead. After navigating your young adult life through this unique experience, you should feel more confident than ever that you are ready for whatever life throws your way. Seniors, you represent an important milestone in AISCT's history, graduating in our 25th year. Together, we celebrate our shared history, traditions, and achievements that have made the school the incredible community it is today. The 37 of you represent 22 different nationalities. 95% of you have taken at least one AP college level class, and collectively, you have taken 203 AP courses and exams. That is 203 university courses already done. For your efforts, you have been rewarded with 123 university and colleges acceptances and counting, and over 19 and a half million in scholarship offers. Congratulations. I am so very proud to call each and every one of you Grizzlies. Congratulations to the class of 2023. As head of school, I get to enjoy a couple of laughs with you today. One such item is singing the AISCT school song. Singing the school song during graduation is a tradition that started with AICT's first graduating class in 2007. Back then, the graduates themselves sang the song with Mrs. Vandermeerva up front clapping to keep the beat. A few years later, music was written for the song and it has been performed at every AICT graduation since. Now, for the past few years, we had to sing the song without help. And I must say, it was a bit painful. But this year, I'm so pleased to welcome back our fourth and fifth graders to help lead us in singing the school song. Graduates, this will likely be the last time you hear this song for a while, so please feel free to join along. Once the fourth and fifth graders are situated, we will begin. Thank you. 
Thank you to our fourth and fifth graders. It was so nice to have a full choir singing the song this year. I would now like to welcome our high school principal, Mr. Peter Thorpe, to the podium. Good afternoon, parents, family members, AICT staff, and of course, our honored graduates. It is my honor today to introduce our faculty elected student speaker, Chloe Odibo. Chloe has been at AICT for 14 years and has been selected by the high school teachers to speak on behalf of the class. I've worked closely with Chloe the past three years as she's been in intricately involved in student council, most recently as vice president. What I admire most about Chloe is her perseverance and grit. When Chloe puts her mind to something, it gets done. Anyone who attended or participated in the amazing fashion show last November can certainly attest to this. Chloe is a person who always stands up for what she believes and consequently has represented the high school students at AICT extremely well. Please welcome to the podium, Chloe Odibo. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start off by saying I'm extremely honored to have been selected as one of your speakers today. As most people know, I joined pre-K at ASCT in 2009. Since I've been at the school for nearly a decade and a half, I struggled a lot with figuring out what I wanted to say today, as I have so many different things and people I could speak about. After reflecting on my time at this school, I thought a lot about what made this place home for me. It was the deep sense of community that enveloped my family when we first joined. For context, let me take you back to my first few years at AACT. Mr. Court was principal. I was doing COSA classes with Ms. Kosi, and my biggest stress in life was preparing for the talent show. We had whole schoolhouse competitions that everyone actually looked forward to and actively participated in. Pep rallies were hazy with smoke machines and colorful lights as the high school athletes ran down the man-made tunnels and all of us would be cheering with excitement. The month, not even the week, building up to International Day was full of class debates over which country we would represent, how we would decorate our room, and most importantly, what food we would present for the International World Tour. Going into high school was like entering a different world that I would dream of being a part of. Once a year, the halls were filled with ceiling high roller coasters that the students made for IDT, and I always look forward to bumping into one of my TAs. Communitas, ACT's ethos we see everywhere. It's in our logo, it's what we call homeroom. But what does that word actually mean? Communitas is a Latin noun, meaning the sense of sharing and intimacy that develops amongst persons experiencing liminality as a group. While this was true when I first came, I feel as though this quality that makes the school so special has been lost as the years have gone by. This could be attributed to me just getting older, but I believe it's deeper than that. We still have the same events as before, but it's not met with the same energy and enthusiasm that I used to evoke. As the school has grown and our brand has developed, these moments have become photo ops. A curated advertisement of what ACT has to offer in theory, but comes short of in actuality. Thanksgiving, International Day, and house competitions have become boxes to tick rather than actual community building events. We have formalized the idea of communitas to such a degree that the essence of the word that holds so much power has been lost in legislation and has become difficult for these organic, genuine moments of enjoyment to take place without going through the handbook first. There's a lack of warmth and compassion, which as a result can be seen amongst the students. We as the students don't care about school unless it's academic. What does the handbook say? How does this look? The students don't care to be a part of ACT. The school is a place you take classes and then you go home. The only things that matter are your AP scores and university. We don't participate in any non-academic aspects of our school. We don't care about our peers and building deep, meaningful connections with one another anymore. People need to get more involved in extracurriculars, greet everyone by name, and most of all, care about the place you spend eight hours of nearly every day in. We can't expect change and expect things to get better when we, know nothing when we do nothing about it. 
Community is important because it holds us accountable and pushes us to do better. If we truly want it to be a great day to be a grizzly, we need to meet each other halfway and end the growing tradition of transactional, solely transactional relationships at ACT. I can say this because I've been here through the changes. I know how it used to be. But if you're only coming now, you'd have nothing to compare it to. You'd acclimate to the school thinking that this is how it is and this is how it will stay. Now I stand on this stage. As a graduate, I want you looked at with admiration as I sing the school song. I'd like to take this, moment, take this moment to thank Victor, Ms. Nicole, Ms. Kosi, Ms. Murray, and Ms. Kat for being constants in a school that's ever changing and reminding me of why this place is home. I'd also like to speak directly to the administration. I genuinely love this school, and because I love this school so much, I want it to be better. So I hope you heard me today, and you seriously consider all that I have said. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Chloe. Next, we have the peer-elected student speaker, Victoria Rossi. Victoria has been an AICT student since 2019, joining the school in her grade eight year. Vicky has a big heart and an energy that is matched by few and a desire to leave the world a better place than she found it. It is these qualities that have made her an outstanding STUCO president and a pleasure to work with. It's no surprise to me that she's been chosen by her peers to speak on their behalf today. Vicky has the natural ability to bring people together. Her open-mindedness and responsible attitude have been an asset to the school. Please welcome our student council president, Victoria Rossi. <laughs> I remember first arriving at AASCT in eighth grade and being shocked at the kindness and automatic inclusion that welcomed me at the door. Soon enough, I was hit with the reality that I had to step my game up to level with the other students. These students, who were merely middle schoolers, had already formed their opinions on the world. They spoke of politics and global issues and enjoyed debating these subjects. However, I soon realized that these subjects hadn't been taught at school. No. Instead, these students spent their free time educating themselves about the world. They refused to be ignorant and didn't let their age be an excuse for living their lives uninformed about subjects that didn't necessarily affect them, but affected others. AACT was the first school that I went to where being smart was cool, something someone could take pride in. Being in an environment like this allows this healthy competition to blossom, where we pushed each other to be the best and learned to not accept anything below exemplary. Senior year quickly teaches you that in order to be successful, you can't simply rely on your lessons at school. After all, as a wise woman once said, it's not for grades, but for life. You have to go further in subjects that interest you if you truly want to be the best. Luckily for this bunch, this trait of curiosity and passion, traits that are innate and can't be taught, never lacked. And the prestigious universities they are off to should prove this very fact. The fact that they went above and beyond what they were asked every single time and did so all by themselves. Although I'm sure you parents have definitely heard the phrase at some point, your child say, I hate school, I can guarantee you that that is never truly meant. School has become a routine in all our lives, as it's all we've ever known. And so we find comfort in it. Comfort in the fact that you know you will see the same faces, knowing what you will order at the cafeteria, knowing you can go to school and meet up with your friends in the bathrooms, or cry, or talk. <laughs> we find peace knowing that even though tomorrow is a new day, you have your routine to ground you and remind you of who you are and where you're headed. It pains me to leave this routine and change our lives completely, knowing that yet again, tomorrow is a new day, but this time we will have absolutely no clue what it will bring. When I spoke to my parents about leaving and how much this hurt me, they answered by saying, I can come back anytime. <laughs> But that didn't seem to reassure me, because it's not the nature, nor the places, or the scenery that make me love this place so much, but it's the people. It's Sila, Leila, and Kino's hugs in the morning. It's Kat and Savannah's beautiful smile. It's Liam, F Nafisa's, and Fed's music. It's Garrett and Maka's wit that humbles you instantaneously. 
It's Rosa, Joelle, and Benjamin's sarcasm and jokes that never fail to brighten up your day. It's Chloe, Hannah, and Bella's style. It's Danny and Zainab's laugh that light up the room. It's Sophia and Kieran and Rosario's competitiveness. It's Suzanne's, FIFA, and Trey's kindness. It's the fights between Arthur, Peter, and Alex in the study hall. <laughs> it's Moahi and Taylor's wisdom. It's, uh, <laughs> you wanna take that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's Moachi and Taylor's wisdom. It's Argeny Tsechos and Omblin's spirit. It's Antoine, Carl, and Lanner's bromance. <laughs> it's Matthew and Edia's undying ambition that make me never want to let go of this place. These are the characteristics of the class of 2023, of the people that I love so dearly. These are the characteristics that create the mosaic of who we have become individually today. And although, yes, it is sad to leave, let our successes and bright future that await us be a tribute to each other and who we have become thanks to these friendships. In an alternate universe, if I could choose who I would want on this journey, I would choose this group of people every single time. It was a great honor being your president and an even greater honor being your friend. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victoria. Our student elected faculty speaker is Mr. Jerome Johnson. Mr. Johnson is one of our grade 12 communitas advisors and a high school math teacher. Mr. Johnson has been at AICT for nine years and has taught all but two of our graduating class at some point in their high school career. Mr. Johnson is a teacher who makes deep and meaningful connections with all of his students. His belief in a student's ability to succeed is infectious and his support is unwavering. Mr. Johnson is incredibly generous with his time as he's always working with students before and after class. The students know they can count on him in good times and in calculus. <laughs> Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Jerome Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe, for those kind words. Good morning, school. Good morning. <coughs> Occasionally, my eyes will sweat. I apologize for that. Good morning, school. Fellow colleagues, honored guests, those watching me online, seniors, Judge, Kate, um, Judge Mary Savage, good morning. I feel honored to be giving your graduation speech this morning. I had a fantastic two years, one of the community's teachers, with Ms. Kat and Ms. Ortiz also enjoying these past two years. I enjoyed the camp, enjoyed Brian planting trees, having sleep over lockdown at the school on a Friday into Saturday. I have fun at school. I love school. <laughs> Sometimes my wife will call me and ask, how are you doing, love? I just need a word of encouragement. And I'll ask her, how's your day going? And she says, SARS. <laughs> that means she wasn't having a good day. And she'll ask, what am I doing? Well, sitting in Ms. Cat's room, eating cake, selection of food, or dancing to Michael Jackson, Just Dance, or singing. And she'll ask, is that your life? <laughs> I gave a speech like this before. Um, and what I did before, I spoke about every student from my point of view. So what I did this time, I went around the school, spoke to my colleagues, everyone, and I asked them, do you have any special message for any of the seniors? So to give you a little bit of a, of a background to the seniors, in grade 11, we were separate. We were individual classes. Then in grade 12, Ms. Kat Ortiz and I said, no, we need to be one unit, strong, a strong circle that no one gets through. There was some resistance in the beginning. What we did was we had one community class for everyone, every single day. Our idea was to build this unit strong. I think that was the, one of the best things that we've done. You've learned how to communicate with each other, call one another out, tell each other when you're at fault, mainly to have each other's backs and be able to count on each other anytime. So with that in mind, I went throughout the school, 
and I asked. My first stop was with, with Mr. Amin. So Mr. Amin always wears his overalls. He was with his wheelbarrow, put his wheelbarrow down. So Mr. Amin and I often speak Afrikaans to one another. Mr. Amin did this. <laughs> he stood up as if he was delivering a speech. And he said, Rosario, you were here for a short time, but in that short time, you made a big impact on him. Your manners are impeccable and you have utmost, utmost respect for your elders. Next person is Trey. So in the mornings when I greet Trey, what I get is, I get this, no words. And for the past few weeks, I've actually realized that Trey is a really popular person. On, off the basketball field, on court. When I spoke to Mr. Dennis, Mr. Dennis had, could not stop speaking about Trey and the care that you have for your brother. Mrs. Peterson says that whenever you speak, your accent, just the way you say good morning, ma'am, you take her back to her childhood. You take her back home to the place that she misses. Argonne, Mr. Dennis wanted to tell you that you have impeccable manners. And even though you were very shy at first, you came out of your shell and you spoke to him more. And I actually didn't know that there was a rivalry between drivers, but Mr. Dennis says he knows he's your favorite driver. <laughs> Some people still hesitate about their identity, not Umbeline. Miss Kat says that she knows who she is, which is excellent. A French, Polish, English young lady. Umbeline's tact, generosity, are some of the things her friends admire. The world should watch out for diplomat and marketing director. Watch out, Mrs. Peterson, your job. <laughs> Garrett, Mr. Young says that you are a phenomenal basketball player and leader on the court. You have strong emotional intelligence and you know how to motivate your teammates. You also listen when he gives advice, gives suggestions on what to do. Your proficiency in both academics and athletics is commendable, showing a remarkable blend of abilities and talents. Carl, Mr. Victor. He says he's your favorite driver. <laughs> he commends you on always being polite in the mornings, and very often students say that they will come back to visit. They are, hardly do, but he knows that you will come back and one day make time to say hi to him. He will always value having you in his bus. He says that he's the favorite driver. Suzanne, Ms. Chanel says that you are a leader, sometimes bossy, a team player, there are three main things that you've shown this year. You've proven that you can be a great leader and you show exactly what you want to do in life, even if you look half asleep. Thanks to you, Ms. Chanel now knows about the hidden treasures of India. Ms. Lake says that Benjamin is quite charismatic and this allows him to connect across a wide range of social groups and ages. He's very highly regarded by his peers as well as his teachers. His confidence and ability to articulate his knowledge and understanding have made him a leader. Benjamin is the epitome of the entrepreneurial spirit. Isabella, Ms. Moraes says that she will miss your banter and your fine sense of humor. Ms. Abata says that you love everything that has to do with pop culture, Pinterest, Hailey Bieber, Selena Gomez, and obviously, <laughs> Gilmore Girls. You're often teased about your expensive tastes. Ms. Kat says that FIFA can read people's linguistic expressions on their face. Amazing, isn't it? She knows who she is and what she needs to do in the world. A scientist in the making, a future doctor, who will invent a cure for something? A disciplined mind, listening, maturity, and multitasking her amazing tools. FIFA, it is okay to correct who do not pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> Federico. Mr. B says that you can live spherically, multimodally, and with sustained impetus and passion that has always set you apart from your immense focus, creative imagination, and work ethic. Your future is bright as life itself. Carpe diem. These are good messages, and as you can see, from not only from those that teach them, but from all over the school. From a cat, Antoine can be rem remembered as a person who stands up with, for his conviction, even if it means cutting ties with others, which is great in life. I would like him to keep an open mind and objective as he starts his adventure with the university. He's the happiest person today 
because he has finished high school. <laughs> what a journey. All the best in your next chapter of your life. Keep smiling. There's that smile. <laughs> Savannah, Miss Rice says that you are a very sweet person. She loves your and her quality time in the morning. Guess why? Because Savannah's late. <laughs> Miss Rabi says that you are the youngest student at AISET to get an A-level drama certificate with distinction in grade 10. Isn't that amazing? Well done. Lana, Mr. Park says that you are the most easygoing student who knows how to hustle for what he wants to achieve. Your journey has only, only begun, Lana. Danny, Mr. Bata said that you got the name Auntie Pocketbook last year because you used to carry around a huge pink bag with everything in it. Lotion, snacks, gum, perfume. You were also extremely sassy to those grade nines who did not show respect. From his cat, Kieran. <laughs> My fellow South African and American, who is proudly South African. When it comes to sport, Kieran is your person. His generosity and big heart to share as being Stuco's, who's kept Stuco's account healthy. Thanks for your kindness and generosity. You know it is okay to speak without flipping something. <laughs> Don't forget, you are the best because you are you. <laughs> Miss Ortiz will never forget Hannah's big eyes asking to allow her to do a presentation on Flexi Friday. And she finally did it in front of the class. So proud of you, Hannah. At university, there won't be Flexi Friday or break time. So please show them what you can do and speak Spanish in public. You are so good at it. And Ms. Ortiz also asked you, please don't chase teachers from the university from the backside. It can be scary. <laughs> Makanaka, I had no idea that you were a swimmer, a butterfly swimmer. If I knew that, I would have encouraged you to join our team to, jo to Johannesburg and give Lucia a break. Ms. Clarkson says that she had the pleasure of teaching you on and off in the past 10 years. She remembers first meeting you as a quiet, observant, and unassuming student, and then seeing you absolutely kill in the swimming pool. You have grown up into this young woman who is discerning, funny, intelligent, and full of grit. Ms. Clarkson's favorite memories will include watching you swim butterfly and attending basketball tour with you. Ms. Kat says that Victoria Rossi can block anyone out when she's working on something important. One who is likely to change the world with business on the one side and a career on the other. She's vocal, not shy to speak her truth. Just don't forget that we at AISET saw the business, politician, philosopher, historian person first in you. Arthur, Ms. Haskins is very proud of you. Everything that you had to deal with from the time you started in school, you just came back smiling, a strong student with a heart of gold. Everything that you do, you give it your all, your best. She is very happy to have gotten to know you at the school. Peter, our Danish native, exceptionally well-mannered. You will greet the loudest every morning in the class and again in the afternoon. Sometimes Peter comes across as a very strong macho. But I was really, ple really pleased to see a different side of him when we did Impact Project. Peter was teaching little children how to swim in a little soft voice, come to the pool. And it was a really different side of Peter. Zainab, very quiet, reserved. Mrs. Peterson says that the best thing about COVID, the end of COVID was to have you rejoin us. And now, here you are, graduating in the class of 2023. Kat, besides you bringing life and sunshine and happiness into one's class, when I went to Miss Naomi class and asked her, who would she like to say something about? And she said she loved you coming in and out of her office, asking her to print something. And then she came with us and she said, you are the three pillars of character, respect, responsibility, and integrity personified. Joel, as teachers, we should not have favorites. <laughs> I'm proud of you and how hard you've worked to achieve your goals. I commend you on always speaking your mind and voicing your opinion about issues that we discuss. 
I thank you for being a very caring person. So I'm hardly ever absent. I'm never absent. One day I was, I was ill. One day. Joel contacted me, and I even got some messages from, from her parents. I really felt blessed. I'm going to miss your gentle, calm soul. Layla, Ms. Joseph says that you're a very kind person. You motivate your peers, and you're determined to bring light to everyone. I always feel a sense of calmness when I speak to you. Liam, Coach Faith says that you exhibit good ethic while maintaining good grades, and this is commendable. Being a world-class DJ requires discipline, dedication, and respect for music. As your calculus teacher, I also think that you are going to solve that problem one day. The world is going to be thankful for you. Matthew possesses immense internal strength, and he has developed strategies that have served to help him achieve excellence in all of his interests. Matthew is exceedingly ethical and holds himself to a high moral code, which serves as a model for others. He demonstrates the mindset qualities that we all, that we want in all our students, resilience, determination, perseverance, and dedication to service. This is from Ms. Lake. Taylor, Mr. Park says that you are quietly confident while being diligent towards your work. Keep striving for excellence. Ms. Joseph found this quote of yours, and I love it. It says, I don't let difficult things get in my way because then I'll end up stuck. And stuck is no place to be when I've got things to do. So as teachers, we're not allowed to have favorites. You know what I'm saying, Nafis? <laughs> so Mr. Ludford said that when um, students leave middle school, they hardly come back. After two weeks, they forget and they play in high school, not Nafis. Nafis was often, I was Nafis's communitas teacher, and he was often late because he was with Mr. Ludford. Nafis would go in and ask Mr. Ludford to help him with problems, and he appreciated that. So you were one of the very few middle schoolers that came, um, came back, and you were one of the few middle school schoolers that my daughter knew. So from time to time when she was with me, she would pull me and say, Tata, there's Nafis. <laughs> I've always come and commented on Kino swimming, and what an amazing swimmer he was. Often when Auntie Jackie came for meetings, I would tell Auntie Jackie's Kino's mom, we all speak, speak about her as Auntie Jackie. So when Auntie Jackie came for meetings, she'll ask, oh, how's Kino doing? And I'll often say, well, Kino needs to practice his fundamental theorem of calculus and know how to make sure he uses it in the context of the problem. So Auntie Jackie would say, yes, yes, Mr. Johnson, put the math aside. How is his manners? And, you know, how is he, re how is he treating others? And I'd always say, yes, Auntie Jackie, Mr. Swartz, what a superb, well-mannered student he is. Respect his peers, his teachers all the time, and needless to say, he has a soundless knowledge of, a, a sound knowledge of calculus. So Ms. Fulp and I, we spoke and we reminisced about the middle school days when we went camping, and she mentioned names like James, uh, uh, Jamie, Batista, Cowboy, Emily, and what an experience that was going on camp in middle school. <laughs> so much so that I said, I'm out of here, I'm going to high school rather. When I went to Ms. Tombi, she said that she wanted to speak about Muachi. She wanted his name to be spelt correctly, name and surname. It had to be perfect. This is what she said. Thank you for being the respectful and humble student all these years. I have known you at AISET. I hope all the other children, children can learn something from you. You don't give respect according to people's level of education and status, but you give respect because they are human beings and deserve it. Please keep it up, and all the best for the future. Sophia, as I said, we're not allowed to have favorites. <laughs> I commend you on your humility and caring personality and enthusiasm. You're also a very strong person and a hard worker in everything that you do. I'm going to miss our chats in the morning. And I know whatever path you find yourself, you will without a doubt make a success, sexful, successful one. So I know you didn't hold up the cup yesterday. You don't need to be a winner. Sure. To hold the cup. You are a champion in my books. 
any day. Alex Musabata says that if, you, if anyone wants to know anything about anything Greek, just ask Alex. <laughs> He's a walking reference. He knows everything about Greek. One thing that I know about Alex is often he's late in the mornings, but when I do see him later, every single day, Alex will go, Mr. Johnson, how are you? Every day, and we, he takes the time to listen to how you are and to engage. I'm gonna miss that, Alex. Sometimes in the mornings, there's a lot of energy in the class, and when we need to get the students' attention, there's one and two that will shout, guys, 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 and eventually there's silence. Sheila Palladino. <laughs> when you want there to be silence, you speak. It happens all the time. It sends shivers through me when I, when, I, when I just sit there and sometimes I look at Kieran and I say, Kieran, did that really happen? And he nods. <laughs> you are a born leader, Sheila. I commend your confidence. And I will definitely support you one day if you decide to run for the President of the United States. So the last few students are probably among the longest serving students at AISCT, Edia. When I went to Ms. Veronica and I asked her, Ms. Veronica, what would you like to say? The tears came. Ms. Veronica knows Edia from the time when she arrived at the school, little, and she had a lot of interaction with you when you were in the various plays, when you were in Annie. Ms. Rose also remembers you, Edia. You always brought joy, laughter, and fun to your friends and classmates. Both commented on your good manners and how respectful you are. From one of our longest serving staff members to one of our longest serving students, Rosa, Ms. Murray says that you are talented, talented art student. I have taught you since grade one, that's Ms. Murray. You are a special student and I trust you continue making art wherever you are. Ms. Rose also says that she can remember you being a very deep thinker. When you said something, your friends listened. Chloe, when I spoke to Mr. Paul, he said that he really enjoyed with working with you because after an event, you'd go to him and ask, how can I improve? And you'd give you some advice and you, you, you took that advice on him. He admires your manners. Mr. Victor, who is probably one of the longest serving <coughs> staff members at the school, also would like to say to you, Chloe, one of the longest seniors at the school, that he can remember your first few days here crying. And often I asked him, are you perhaps preferring to spring or your older sister? And he says, no, I know that, Chloe. And that was her. And he saw you growing up through the years. And he said, you will never, ever forget to show your respect to your elders. Today I can say, you've, ma <sighs> you've made an impact on everyone around you. You are in everyone's hearts today, and especially each other's. Please give them a hand. We know that you are all lifelong learners, and we know that you all loved Algebra too. We wish you well and go out there and positively, positively impact the world. Let me conclude by saying that I see strong relationships that was built over the years. Good friendships. You have each other's backs. I would like to leave you with these words. Not my words. Words from Bruno Mars that, <laughs> that I hear you telling each other. I was running out of water. <laughs> You can count on me like one, two, three, and I'll be there. And I know it when I need it. I can count on you like four, three, two, <laughs> and you'll be there. Because that's what friends are supposed to do. Oh, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> you can count on me because I can count on you.
Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for that very heartfelt speech. I am privileged to introduce our honorary guest speaker, Kate Savage, who serves as judge of the Western Cape High Court. Since 2012 and during her tenure, she has acted as a judge in courts, including the Supreme Court of Appeal, the Labor Court of Appeal, the, the Competition Appeal Court, and the Labor Court of South Africa. In November of 2022, she was elected as a part-time judge of the United Nations Appeal Tribunal by the General Assembly of the United Nations. Kate holds a BA law degrees from the University of Cape Town and a law degree from Notre Dame. During the drafting of the final constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Kate was employed in parliament by the ANC's Constitutional Commission, reporting to current president Ramaphosa, and was involved in all bilateral and trilateral negotiations between the National Party, the Democratic Party, and the ANC during this time. She was closely involved in negotiation and drafting of a number of the clauses in the final constitution, including the preamble. It is an honor to welcome Judge Kate Savage to address our graduates. It's a great honor to be here and have been invited to speak to you today on this very momentous occasion, which marks, I think for you, the closure of one chapter and really the opening of an enormously important and exciting chapter in, your ne in the next few years <clears throat> excuse me, of your lives. It's a particular honor for me to celebrate a commencement because when I was at school, I didn't celebrate mine. I couldn't wait to leave government school of the 1980s, which was an unacceptable, <clears throat> racially segregated, narrow-minded experience quite different to the wonderfully broad and open schooling experience that all of you have enjoyed. <clears throat> it shows us how much life changes. I had an urgency to move into my life, to, to live the life that I chose, unconstrained by rules I considered petty and just plain wrong. I wanted not only to choose my own course and make my own decisions, but to be part of a movement to change the very system in this country. What today powerfully illustrates for me is how life changes and that what, what that change really means is what we see today. The school wouldn't have been here when I was at school. <clears throat> but the important thing that I'd really like to speak to you about today is choice. Because you've made a lot of choices. You're going to fantastic universities, you're going to study amazing programs, you've got scholarships, you've applied for them, <clears throat> and you've taken all sorts of steps along the way which have allowed you to get there. But there's a bigger part of the next chapter, uh, which is also important, and that those are other choices that you make, not just choices to study, but other choices that you make as to how you're going to live your life. The choices that you make at 18, 19, and 20, they're not always the same choices that you would make if you were 20, 30, or 40. And so you need to know how you approach the issue of choice. You need to know how you will consider the information before you that might lead you to a particular choice to make one decision over another decision. You don't want to wake up a decade later or even decades later and find that you're doing something that really truly doesn't make you happy, that you're doing for other people and not for yourself. At university, I had a very firm belief in fairness and justice, a deep, deep moral objection to apartheid and discrimination, and those were very strong principled reasons which led me to study law. But that decision was not straightforward. I fought against my father's very strongly held view that law was for me, a view which I initially point blank refused to follow. That was my personality. <laughs> I recognized later that some of his motivation was the fact that I was really grounded in the fact that I was the first woman in his family to have ever attended university. Uh, not that people hadn't gone to university, just women hadn't gone to university. And also recognized later that he had wanted to be a lawyer and he'd never followed his own passion to do so. So what really changed things for me was that in 1987, I was charged under the emergency regulations uh, for publishing an article in the university newspaper, and I faced for a year that, uh, the indignity of being in a criminal court and faced up to 20 years imprisonment for my behavior. 
that cemented my very, very strong resolve that already existed to change the law. I must tell you, I must tell you that I, even in spite of my then resolve that law was for me, I was a distracted law student, not one that any of my colleagues would have thought would become a, a judge, and certainly not me. So I was not really focused all the time on academics. I was focused on other things at the time when I was at law school. So when I look back, however, it's precisely these very strongly held beliefs um, that have led to very key decisions in my life. And they've taken me and charted my course in law, but they have also kept me firmly in the law. And that's at a time when women have not been either in the courtroom to the extent that we even see today, and we don't see a lot of women in the courtroom, especially in the appeal courts, but we, it, is, it has also been at a time in which, frankly, I've had to blast through glass ceilings repeatedly, and as most repeat, I mean, as the last month showed me, once again, that I still have to do it. So it's not an easy context for women to operate in law, and you have to really have wanted to study it and want to do it, and you have to find ways of wanting to remain in it. And that's what I've been able to find in my firm, firm beliefs as to why I studied it and what I believe I can do in the law and change uh, in the law. So if you, excuse me, if you focus on what the influences are that make you take decisions, if you don't follow blindly, if you seek out different views to really help you try and unpack why it is that you make difficult choices, not just the choices to whether you're going to study business or not study business, but choices about your direction, choices about other things that you decide to do, you'll be able to weigh up options and choose paths in your life that will enable your progress in a direction that's ultimately a good fit for you. Good choices are made when you recognize who you are and know what fits comfortably with you, not what your family thinks is good for you, or not what your teachers think might be reflective of your, your academic ability, but who you really as a person are. Of course, there will unfortunately be challenges and failures. Some plans and dreams just fall flat, but it's in those failures and challenges that our real learnings in fact occur. You almost want people to not have these charmed lives where everything goes according to plan, because when you face challenge, you actually start to really grapple with what you're doing, where you're going, what you want to see. You're going to have to let bad relationships go. You're going to have to make big and difficult choices about relationships. You're going to have to keep good relationships, and sometimes you'll have to fight for good relationships. But some of the biggest, biggest learnings are in those times. Though that's what really unlocks for you your clear thoughts about what your direction should be and your views as to where you want to see yourself. When I was in my 20s, I decided that I'd like to be a professional soccer referee. Now you can imagine my father who thought I should be a lawyer. Uh, and I'd now studied law, so uh, I was very firmly of the view that law was now not going to take place for a while and I was going to become a soccer referee. So I made various inquiries at various stages about how I'd go about doing so. And I was repeatedly told that women do not officiate professional soccer matches in case I didn't know. Well, I, didn't, I hadn't seen any women, but that wasn't going to stop me, that's for sure. So last year, I watched a World Cup match, and I saw between Germany and Costa Rica, and three women walked onto the field to officiate the match. I wrote a... I, I, I sent a video clip to my three children telling them I have tears in my eyes because they knew I'd wanted to be the referee. And that I hoped that they would not be constrained in their lives by the limits that other people place on them. That was my WhatsApp message. What was apparently impossible for me, it appears, was always possible, it just wasn't acceptable. But with the door of professional soccer refereeing closed, and probably my father having put his head in his hands and being most relieved at that, I focused more clearly on what other doors may be available to me. And it was at that stage that I recognized that adjudication uh, might in fact suit me well. And it tur as it turns out, I have become a referee. I've come a become a referee of sorts that's probably best suited to who I am. 
So things do have an uncanny way of working out. If, if, you, don't, if you don't think about them sometimes too much, but also if the building blocks that you've decided to put in place are right, then opportunities arise. Opportunities which you can't always plan. You can be the Spanish dancing champion of South Africa. You can have won the public speaking award. You can have become a national hockey player. But sometimes it's not all about that. Tina Turner may have been a nurse if she hadn't gone to a club one night with her sister at the age of 17 and taken the microphone. Some of the building blocks are not just about getting the right degree, although education and training are absolutely important. You can't be a writer if you don't practice writing. You won't be a singer if you don't hone your singing skills. You won't be a good fit in a team if you don't work on relationships and if you don't know what teamwork really is. You won't finish a marathon if you don't train. You need to take responsibilities for, responsibility for all aspects of your life. But know too that you won't always make the right choices. Sometimes you'll make the wrong choice and that too is good for you. We choose one route over the other after we weigh up competing decisions, uh, competing arguments at the time, and we decide on a course that we think is right for us, if we take decisions slowly and properly. Judges do that. We listen to the courtroom and we, in the courtroom, to what is going on. We hear different views and we make a decision. We <coughs> apply the law to the facts and the evidence before us. But we often get it wrong. And we're set aside on, a, on appeal, and not just quietly set aside on appeal, set aside on appeal publicly. So what we all need to learn is a degree of humility in recognizing that human beings, all of us, are fallible. Every single one of us. You may study something and think you're fantastic. You may study something you hate but use the degree in other ways to, to uh, find, uh, fi to, to, in other ways and find resources to study then later what it is that you love. But remain open to possibilities. And when you fall down, stand up, brush yourself off, and start moving again. Take responsibility for your own actions, since very little is gained by blaming, complaining, or trying to persuade others that you were right when you were actually not. But of course, none of this can be done if you don't have courage. You need courage. Uh, you need courage to, uh, to take decisions, to act on them, courage to drive change in your life, to start exercising if you don't, to stop complaining if you persi persistently do so. If you, you need courage to move, to move forward in different ways in your life. And you, that change that you ultimately drive may also not be change with, that accords with the views of those around you. You have to have courage to differ with even those who are closest to you. And if they really, truly are people who are close to you, they need to develop, develop that courage to listen to you. A great deal of time in life is spent worrying about what may happen before it even has, or focusing on the behavior of others when you have little control over it. What you hold is the power to manage how you respond to their behavior. Claim that power. No life works out as you think it will. I got a scholarship to do a master's in law at Notre Dame in Indiana, and halfway through I announced that I was coming home to take up a job working for the current president in the negotiations towards the final constitution. I did later return to finish the degree, but doing so and doing it in parts was an unthinkable decision for many around me, particularly my dear deceased dad. Yet, if I didn't have the courage to take that decision, against all advice, I would not have been involved in writing the preamble to the Constitution. I wouldn't have been involved in negotiations towards a final Constitution which changes the way in which this country works. I wouldn't have had the impact that I believe I was able to have in that process. And that was despite the fact that every single person around me said, Kate, you're crazy. What are you up to now? So what people might think is right for you is not always so. I could have been wrong. That's true. 
the job might have not worked out. I could have hated it. I might have now broken my degree in half. The scholarship, may, they may have withdrawn it. If, it. if it turned out to be wrong, I would have had to stand up, brush myself off, and continue on in another direction. But it would have been e it would be easy for me to know that when I did that, I'd considered everything around me, I'd considered all the facts that were available to me, and I took a decision that I thought was based on me and who I was. So, like judging, courage is sometimes the courage to be wrong. Debate is consistently closed down in our society in ways that have become increasingly worrying to me. I place enormous store on listening and remaining open to persuasion. My job requires that of me. Whether I remove a child from a parent, sentence someone to life in prison, or if I take other decisions which have serious and very life-changing consequences for people, I may walk into a courtroom with one view and after listening be persuaded that in fact the right way to go is the other. That is what being open-minded is all about. Practice it. People who lack the ability to listen or even refuse to do so block out opinions that are different from their own. They often speak too quickly. They often speak without hearing and listening and without assessing situations around them carefully before they talk. They offer a view when it might have been much more prudent to understand who else is around and what their views are or in fact ask questions before they say what it is that they think is right. There is much benefit in taking time to hear views which may differ from your own, and you may find they have a bigger impact on you than you thought. Finally, we see in courts daily the consequences of, behavior, of the behavior of reckless and unthinking people. People from all walks of life, People like Tom and Daisy in The Great Gatsby, who if Scott Fitzgerald, if you haven't read it, you really should, so insightfully described as careless, who smashed things up and creatures and then retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together and let other people clean up the mess they had made. I hope that what you do is choose a reflective and purposeful life with thoughtfulness and care. In this very grossly unequal world of ours, in this grossly unequal country of ours, be careful that wealth and privilege do not breed increasing levels of entitlement often exercised with little or no moral judgment. The law is not something which one may choose to abide by or even enforce, and there is not and there's, there's no reason that why, if you're rich or well-connected, why you, if you went to the finest schools or know the most influential of people, that you should be insulated in some way from its reach. Try hard not to be led astray by the influences of people who do not accord with who you are and with your principles. Focus on people who play a positive role in your life. Keep true to who it is that you are, what inspires and motivates you, and what gives you direction. Consider how you can make a difference in this world. Argue, argue, challenge, and be prepared to change. Have the courage to take well-considered risks. Be brave enough to grab opportunities presented to you, even when those around you do not think that would be a good thing to do. But focus too on what, it makes a, what makes a whole person, what makes you happy, what makes you well from a mental and physical perspective. You cannot just focus on academic marks. You need to focus on a total picture. I sit in a scholarship committee and we see people who come there with CVs out of this world. Every subject's been an A, every scholarship's been offered to the person, every challenge that they've accepted, they've excelled at. And yet when you in fact try and deeply understand the person, they can't talk much about anything but their achievements. Life is more than that. You need to find that part of yourself and how it is that you can be in this world that really adds something new and different and adds, makes a really substantial contribution to the place. 
But know too that one day when you leave the office, someone else walks in the next day to take your place. At the end of it all, you have your family and your friends, and they truly do matter the most. You have one life. You have to live it, please, consciously, kindly, bravely, and purposefully every day to the full. I wish you all the very best of luck in all your future endeavors. I celebrate with you, your parents, your guardians, your families, friends, and teachers, this momentous occasion for you all. Well done and congratulations. Thank you, Judge Kate Savage. We will now present our Pillar Awards. These awards are selected by the faculty, an incredible challenge as there are so many talented seniors. I would like to invite Mr. Peter Thorpe to the stage to introduce the first Pillar Award. Okay. The first Pillar Award is the Distinguished Service Learning Award presented to members of the graduating class who have demonstrated genuine engagement and collaboration and meaningful action in the AICT community. These students designed and implemented a service-based impact project with, and passed with distinction. This year we have two graduates who have accomplished this feat. Congratulations to Matthew Lieberman. and Makanaka Musa Daidzwa. The next award is the Communitas Award for Global Citizenship. This is presented to the member of the graduating class selected by the high school faculty and as, as an exemplary representative of, of a global citizen. This student has a positive and accepting attitude towards others, the ability to converse in at least two languages, a record of contribution to the life and spirit of the school, and the capacity to bring differing people together into a sense of community thus furthering the cause of international understanding. This student has made significant contributions to the intellectual, athletic, social, and cultural life of AISCT. The student selected for this honor excels both within and outside of the classroom. He has held numerous leadership roles in student council, global issues, and model United Nations, as well as taking a rigorous course load, including eight AP courses. He has been highly active in service learning and athletics and was recently awarded the Association of International Schools in Africa Award for Excellence. This year's award for global citizenship goes to Mwahi Talib. Congratulations. <laughs> The award for academic excellence is presented to the member of the graduating class with the best overall academic record. This student personifies the attainment of academic goals the school has for its students. This student's academic achievements reflect consistent industry, genuine intellectual curiosity, perseverance in adversity, and a love of learning. The recipient for this year's academic excellence award has a GPA of 4.25 which includes nine AP courses taken, six during the senior year. A near-perfect SAT score 
and proudly represented AISCT in national math competitions, having top finishes in the South African Mathematics Olympiad and the University of Cape Town Mathematics Competition, while also taking part in a national math camp amongst the top achievers in the country. Congratulations to this year's Academic Excellence winner, Garrett Hacking. The final Pillar Award is the Pat Gorvala Trophy for Leadership, presented to the member of the graduating class who has demonstrated outstanding leadership while upholding AICT's three pillars of character, respect, responsibility, and integrity. During the senior year, this student demonstrated effective leadership skills in academics and student government and personified the type of graduate of whom AICT is proud. The student selected has been at AICT since grade one and is a pillar of the community. She's been involved in every event this school year, demonstrating her leadership both in action and in words. Please join me in congratulating our Stuco Events Chair, Sila Palladino. I am now pleased to invite our high school principal, Mr. Peter Thorpe, our high school counselor, Ms. Sarah Lynn Knudsen, and our school council chairperson, Mr. Craig McConnell, to join me on stage to begin our presentation of the high school diplomas to our class of 2023. As head of school, it is my privilege to inform all in attendance that the faculty and administration certified that these students have met all of the requirements for graduation at the American International School of Cape Town. Graduates, as your group is announced, please come forward. You'll be called up to the stage one by one. Guests in attendance, this is a celebration, and you are welcome to applause and cheer as the diplomas are presented. Idia, Efua, Chinelo, Tandiswa, Aguele. Idia, oh, sorry, row one, please stand. Idia is both Nigerian and African American. She has been at AICT since kindergarten in 2010. Idia's main accomplishments in high school were her contributions to the arts at AICT and finding peace in unbearable situations. She utilized those emotions to further invigorate self-discovery in her learning and life. Edie is planning to continue her studies abroad in the USA, where she will experiment in political science and pursue a degree in the arts, specifically modern architecture. Edie would like to thank all of you, all of those who have, who have supported her growth throughout the years, her teachers, her friends, you know who you are, and most of all, her family, who are the backbone of her success. Zainab Naz Akgung. <laughs> Zainab hails from Turkey. She joined AICT in 2018 for grade eight and returned for her final grade 11 and 12 years. Zainab counts her major accomplishments as finishing four online courses in one year and managing to graduate despite the number of, number of absences she has accumulated. <laughs> Zainab will be studying psychology at UCT. I would like to say thank you a million times to her parents and she loves you a million more. Also, thank you to the girls for being the best friends anyone could ever have. Peter, Nirop, Storgard, 
Anderson. <laughs> Peter is Danish and has been at AICT since grade eight. His accomplishments include completing multiple AP classes, including AP Calculus, AP Chemistry, AP Seminar, AP Statistics, AP Physics One, and AP Physics Two online. Peter will be starting his journey as a biomedical engineer at the University of Groningen. Argonne, Charles, Pilar, Bayer. Argonne is Ethiopian American and has been at AICT for her grade 11 and 12 years. She's been a part of the U19 basketball and football teams, and she won the Sportswoman of the Year Award in 2022. Argonne will be studying in the US at the Agnes Scott College in Atlanta. She says thank you to all her friends and family for always supporting her. Carl Felix Beyer. Carl is from the United States. He joined AICT in 2021 in his grade 11 year. Carl is the only AICT student to be invited to play with the Westerford Orchestra. He has represented AICT at an international NUN conference in Germany and played varsity basketball and volleyball. Carl will be attending St. Louis University of Madrid to pursue a bachelor's degree in business. Isabella Johanna Bibombe. <laughs> Isabella is a proud South African. She joined AISET in 2021 in grade 10. A talented artist and creative in all that she does, she will be attending the Paris College of Art to major in fashion design. She would like to thank her dad for pushing her to become the best version of herself and her mom for introducing her to the literary world through authors like Jane Austen and Toni Morrison, as well as loving her for who she really is. Love also to her brother Kobe, the best brother she could have ever had. <laughs> Alexander Philip Contaritas. Alex, Alex is both Greek and South African. He has been at AISCT since 2014 in grade two. He has enjoyed finding love in the ocean and is pleased to be graduating despite his attendance. <laughs> Alex plans to attend university after high school. Ambeline Marie Edvige de Lasses Saint Genis. <laughs> Ambeline is French and has attended AISCT the past two years, starting in 2021. Her greatest accomplishment has been getting an A plus in the hardest class in high school, publications. <laughs> Ambeline plans to attend King's College London and wants to thank her mom, dad, brother, and sister for their never-ending support. She says, without your help, I would not have been able to achieve this milestone, and I am so grateful. <laughs> Rosario Tavira Nicolas Francisco. Rosario is both Angolan and South African. He joined AISCT for his senior year. Rosario's greatest accomplishments have been forming lifelong ties with his professors and friends who have guided him to be the young man he is today. His future plans are currently undecided. <laughs> Garrett Bruce Hacking. Garrett is Japanese and American. He joined AISCT in 2021 for his grade 11 year. 
Garrett's high school achievements include qualifying for the prestigious South African Math Olympiad camp and being named MVP of the varsity basketball team in his senior year. Garrett will do missionary service for two years in the Dominican Republic. Row one, please be seated. Row two, you may stand. Antoine Unkosana Herman Hatzold. <laughs> Antoine is French and German. He joined AICT in his grade 10 year. Antoine has had success launching a UK-based company with a friend and will be attending the EU Business School next year. He is excited for the future and what it has in store. <laughs> Mohammed Nafis Hussein. <laughs> Nafis is from Bangladesh and has been at AICT since grade four. He has accumulated over one and a half million streams on Spotify and will either be attending the Georgia Institute of Technology, Northeastern in Boston, or Fordham University in New York, and will continue to pursue his music career. Nafis would like to thank his parents and his close friends for making senior year perfect. <laughs> Rosa Shu. Rosa is Taiwanese and South African. She has been at AICT since pre-kindergarten in 2009. Rosa has taken on the challenge of AP art 2D design, where she produced many personal works and grew her artistic capabilities. She will be moving to Taiwan for a gap year while taking a year-long Mandarin language course, then enrolling into fashion, sc fashion school. Rosa would like to thank her parents for giving her access to, as well as encouraging her to pursue her dreams in life. She says thank you to Rhea, her personal chef sister, Annie, her personal therapist sister, <laughs> as well as Alan, her annoying math tutor brother, <laughs> for taking care of her and leading her up to this moment. She loves you all. <laughs> Suzanne Sarah Jacob. Suzanne is from India and has been at AICT for her grade 11 and 12 years. Her accomplishments include completing eight AP classes in her two years at AICT, receiving a five in seminar, as well as being a member of the under-19 basketball team. Suzanne plans to study law at Durham University. She would like to thank her parents, her little brother Chris, as well as her dear friends and teachers, both at AICT and in India, that supported her through this high school experience. Hannah Emma Jones. <laughs> Hannah is South African and has been at AICT since grade nine. She has been a Stuco grade representative since grade 10 and counts completing AP Physics I as one of her major high school accomplishments. Hannah will be studying chemical and physical sciences at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Benjamin Kraus Nagy. <laughs> Benjamin is both German and Hungarian. He joined AISET in 2021 for grade 11. One of Benjamin's major accomplishments in high school has been launching a UK based company with a friend. <laughs> he will be attending the University of Malta and plans to grow his company. He is calling it now Forbes List 2030. <laughs> and no, and no, he will not give you any money just because he knew you in high school. <laughs> Matthew Dan Lieberman. <laughs> 
Matthew is from South Africa and has been a student at AISCT since grade six. His major high school accomplishments include writing and publishing academic research, achieving a 4.3 GPA, interning at HSBC Venture Capital, and developing programs for students in Kailicha. Matthew will most likely be attending the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia to study commerce and finance. He would like to thank his family for their constant, unconditional support and his friends for all the memories and experiences they have shared over the years. Layla Mago Beatty. <laughs> Layla is both Indian and South African. She has been an AISCT student since grade seven. Layla's major accomplishments in high school include receiving the Principal's Honor Roll Award for three years, being the Stuco Wellness Committee Chair, and not dropping out. Layla plans to attend university either in the UK or here in Cape Town. <laughs> Federico Maro. <laughs> Federico is an Italian and joined AISCT in 2020 in grade 10. He was proud to be named Sportsman of the Year and enjoyed being the lead guitarist with the school band, The Feds. A highlight for him was winning the AISJ football tournament this year on the U19 team. He will be studying business administration at IE University in Spain, Segovia, and then Madrid, and aims for a career in sports management. Row two, please be seated. Row three, you may stand. Liam James McConnell. <laughs> Liam is South African and has been at AICT since grade six. His major achievement in high school was completing AP Calculus BC. Liam is planning to study econometrics at the University of Rotterdam and wants to give a special thank you to Mr. J for always going the extra mile for him since grade six and to his parents for their constant support. Lanner Iragaba McNiven. <laughs> Lanner is from Burundi and the United States. He has attended ASCT since 2020, joining for his grade 10 year. Lanner was proud to be part of the initiative to teach Miracle Kids to swim, as well as being a member of the 2023 U19 football team that toured and beat AISJ in March. He will be attending the EU Business School in Barcelona, studying sports management. Makanaka Grace Musa Daitswa. <laughs> Makanaka hails from Zimbabwe and joined AICT in grade eight. Maka served as the basketball team captain and is also proud of her impact project on improving thermal comfort in the informal settlements, which has resulted in conversations with local governments on this important issue. She plans to study architecture at the University of California, Berkeley, the University of Manchester, or Yale University. <laughs> Taylor Reese Nicholas. <laughs> Taylor was born in Saudi Arabia and is also South African. She has attended AICT since grade six. Taylor has challenged herself by taking AP Physics and AP Calculus AB and has adopted an effective work ethic in doing so. She'll be studying astrophysics either at the University of Cape Town, University of Groningen, or Maastricht University in the Netherlands. 
Taylor would like to thank her parents for always encouraging her to own the path she walks and her brother for always looking out for her. Chloe Uchechi Odibo. <laughs> Chloe is Nigerian and has been an AISCT student since 2009 in pre-K. One of her many high school accomplishments was organizing the phenomenal fashion show. Chloe will be going to study fashion design at Polimoda in Florence. She would like to thank her parents for being her number one supporters and encouraging her to pursue what she's passionate about. Sila <laughs> Louise Palladino. Sila is American and joined AISCT in 2012 for grade one. Sila takes pride in being the best Duco events chair, um, basing one of the main coordinators of the fashion show, as well as being the head of communications for Pads for Us. Sila will be studying global health and social medicine at King's College London. She would like to say thank you to her parents for allowing her to grow up in amazing places such as Cape Town and thank you to her grandfather who recently passed for being her and her brother's biggest supporters during their academic journey. <laughs> Cacliso Lassetti Poloholo. Kat is South African and has been an AISCT student since grade eight. Her main high school accomplishment was finding a suitable social circle while exercising patience. You know who you are, friends. <laughs> it took four years to acquire these people in her life for whom she will be eternally grateful. Kat is planning to relocate to the USA to pursue a degree in the sciences, mainly within the field of chemistry. Kat gives God praise for it all. She is thankful to her mom for always being there for her Words cannot adequately describe her thanks. Lastly, Kat dedicates her diploma to her late brother, who she knows has been with her in spirit and was unable to receive his. She has a message to her peers. Let's constantly remind ourselves that we were significant people who walked these halls. Beyond these barriers, we are infinite. Don't let difficulties that a college education entails convince you otherwise. After all, we are limitless. Joelle Elizabeth Quinn. <laughs> Joelle is from Canada and has been an AISCT student since grade eight. She is proud to have been mentioned in the Nafisa's Buji songs <laughs> and was accepted into nine different universities. Joelle will be attending King's College London. Joelle would like to give a shout out to her mom, dad, and sisters. She says, I love you guys. Thanks for always being there for me no matter what. And a shout out to all my friends who I've made unforgettable memories with, and Mr. J. <laughs> Victoria Catherine Rossi. <laughs> Victoria is Italian and Swiss. She has been at AISCT since 2019 in grade eight. Her greatest accomplishments in high school include being Stuco president, taking nine APs, and getting into her dream schools. Vicky will be attending UCL in the UK. She says, love and thanks to her family for the endless support and to the love of her life, her cat, Booby. Row three, please be seated. Row four, you may stand. Trey Devon Spruill. <laughs> Trey is American and joined AICT last August for his senior year. His main accomplishments include the theater production, marimba performances, and playing on the basketball team. Trey's plans for next year are currently undecided.
Afifa, Lotta, Esme, Stahl. <laughs> FIFA is Dutch and has been at AICT since January 2021. Her major accomplishments include being the Stuco Environmental Committee Chair, earning a spot on the Honor Roll and Principal's Honor Roll, as well as earning the AP Scholar Award. FIFA will be attending university in the Netherlands. Lotus Maria Stanton Pearl. Lotus is Guatemalan and has been at ASCT since 2020. Her major high school accomplishments include being a part of the soccer team and managing to secure a win at the Redham tournament during her third year. Lotus will be trying out for the Guatemalan women's national soccer team and has been accepted into SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design for the start of 2024 where she will be pursuing a career in interior design. Lotus would like to say thank you to her family for supporting her and to her mother for pushing her to work hard for the life she deserves. <laughs> Kino Anthony Swartz. Kino is South African and has been at ASCT since grade three. He has represented South Africa in swimming at the African Championships in Zambia, as well as the FINA Swimming World Cup in Berlin, Germany. Kino will be continuing his studies in physical therapy and kinesiology, either in South Africa or Australia. Savannah Sarah Nadine Tardieu. Savannah is both French and Swazi. She joined ASCT in 2020, and her major high school accomplishments include filming two Netflix series with plans to film the fifth season of one of those shows in November. Savannah will be attending the University of the Arts London for public relations. She would like to thank her family for always being there for her and supporting her dreams and she would like to thank her friends for always giving her a reason to smile. Moahi Amani Taledi. Moahi is South African and has attended AISET since grade three. His major high school accomplishments is finishing high school and he will be attending the University of Utrecht next school year. <laughs> Arthur Tilka. Arthur hails from Germany and has been an AISCT student since grade eight. Arthur's main high school accomplishment has been his impact project and he will be attending IE University in Spain. <laughs> Kieran Michael Urquhart. Kieran is both South African and American. He has been at AISCT since grade nine and is proud to have passed Algebra II twice. <laughs> Kieran's plans are to attend Oklahoma State University and get barreled. He would like to thank his family and the teachers who supported him throughout this weird but fun journey. He would like to give a special mention to Madame Cat. He promises you you'll have your farm in no time. Sophia Elizabeth Weyer. <laughs> Sophia is Polish and American and has been at AISCT since grade three. Her greatest high school achievements include winning Sportswoman of the Year, 
participating in prosperous sports teams throughout high school, and successfully completing eight AP courses. Sophia will be attending the University of Groningen in September to study international relations and international organizations. She would like to thank her parents and siblings for always pushing her to perform her best and her family overseas for supporting her. Row four, please be seated. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Before I call up Victoria for the tossing of the caps, I want to thank a few people who helped make today's event possible. Thank you to Ms. Rice, Ms. Holland, Ms. Peterson, Mr. Thorpe, Ms. Clausen, Ms. Wire, Ms. Georgia, Mr. Ryan, and the rest of the maintenance team for all of your support. Our technology team has also worked hard for the past few days. Thank you to Mr. Saunders, Mr. Roseman, Mr. Webster, Ms. Rudman, and Ms. Charnell. Graduates, at the beginning, I told you there would be a number of things that happened for the final time today. With that in mind, it is the final time I get to say this to you. It's a great day to be a Gracie. <laughs> to complete the confirmation of diplomas, I would like to invite our student council president, Victoria Rossi, to the podium. I would like to invite all of the seniors to please come forward. at the back, bro. <laughs> Get her in front. <laughs> She's like two feet tall. <laughs> okay. There we go. Seniors, you may now move your tassels from right to left. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the AASCT graduating class of 
Thank you to everyone for coming to our graduation ceremony today. Guests of the graduates, please join us for a reception in their honor behind the Parthenon in the Performing Arts area. Students in grades 9, 10, and 11, it is your lunch time. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you, everyone.